Pontius Pilate famously said to Jesus, what is truth? Shortly before he gave in to the mob and the duplicitous chief priest and had him executed, executed for the crime of blasphemy, a crime he was innocent of. Honesty in architecture has often been a conversation in the university that comes up. The modernists of the early 20th century argued that honest architecture is a stripping away of ornament, bringing the building down to its core elements and exposing the guts of the building. This line of thinking reached its zenith when in the 1970s a building so ridiculously exposed the guts as to make the guts the ornament, this being the Pompidou Center in Paris. To be clear, I'm not arguing that it's not a building worthy of some praise, as there is definitely some benefit to learning from the Pompidou Center. How often now, as we dine at a casual dining restaurant for lunch, do we find the raw guts of the building exposed? As in, we can see the steel truss joists in the ceiling, the spiral duct of the air conditioning, the bare electrical conduit on the walls. These elements used to be hidden because it was considered unfinished to expose such, but now, this is a fairly normal aspect of architectural expression. But is this really honest? What is honesty or truth in architecture? It's a deep philosoph philosophical question that can plague professors and students alike forever in a mental circle of jerks, pontificating in big multisyllabic words. As an aside, I always found it hilarious when during any lecture or visiting speaker at a university, there would always be a segment of the student population racing to ask questions during the Q&A period. And instead of asking simple one-line questions, they would always engage in a long protracted attempt to make themselves appear smart through rambling, incoherent run-on sentences that, that just, they used as many big words as they can. I mean, is this honest? So in college, I needed a different strategy, a different tactic, because I didn't want to study or do the assignments or anything like that. So I'd come up with smart questions that would make me sound smart to the teachers, you know, so when they were given the grades, they might think, hey. So I'd be like, yes, uh, Professor, after perusing the copious reading assignments, which you ungrudgingly designate as compulsory, it has become abundantly clear to me that the incipient, and might I say pandemic, rise of quantitative easing in the post-holographic arena spawns a situation and, in fact, a conundrum <laughs> in which the widespread growth of existential and even dystopian paradigms will threaten to dominate the landscape for the foreseeable future. <laughs> now, having said that, how would you, therefore, postulate a quid pro quo complexification from a nihilistic standpoint? And being broadly contemporaneous, would that postulation even be germane to the philosophical dogma of the period? The truth is often far simpler than academics like, like to make it seem. The game in university is to show off how smart you are. This includes the professors. Many will continually reevaluate simple concepts to drill into a so-called deeper meaning and dissect and dissemble to the point of utter meaninglessness. But truth is truth. When we speak of truth, it can be something as simple as gravity exists, and based on the mass of the object, the acceleration of gravity impacts the path of nearby objects. It can be often simpler to say that on Earth, if an apple falls from a tree to the ground, we are witnessing the effect of gravity. What does this have to do with honesty in architecture? Well, because architecture is an art and a science that deals with constructing habitats in a universe governed by the laws of physics, we can safely say that any building on Earth must recognize that zero gravity beams do not and cannot exist. Humans require ventilation. So as we design, we must provide solutions, whether passive or active, to provide such ventilation for the estimated number of people that will inhabit the building and so on and so on. There are laws of physics that govern everything we do as architects. So the first element of honesty or truth in architecture must be adherence to the law of nature. Sadly, we live in a world 
where there are people who are arguing for falsehoods. The news media is one of the worst offenders in this country, constantly telling lies about what is actually happening, whether through incompetence or through malice and artifice. Architecture is more difficult to be dishonest since it does ultimately rely on the laws of nature to exist. It's not to say that there isn't dishonest architecture, but I would suggest that dishonesty is primarily found in ethics and academics. As mentioned before, so much of academics and architecture aims to falsely elevate architecture above what it really is an art and a science of building buildings. It's very basic, simple, and not very sexy intellectually. Yeah, I know, many architects hate to admit this, but what we do is really just a fancier version of what beavers do. On the ethics side, I think this is a bit more rare, but still there are some architects who engage in dishonest professional acts. Truth and honesty are important. Eventually truth comes down like a pallet of bricks suspended over our heads, as gravity does what gravity does. As mentioned before, the news media has become such a dishonest source of never-ending lies. Social media and popular culture further lies and distorted perceptions of reality such that it becomes very difficult to stand up for truth. If everyone else is saying something like Kyle Rittenhouse killed black men in Kenosha, Wisconsin, and yet the truth is he shot white men, Standing up for the truth can be dis dangerous. It is in this way that we often find ourselves duplicitously saying things that we do not believe in, also that we fit in with everyone else. As social creatures, we humans need and crave this fitting in. It has been one of the elements of our success as a species in conquering the entire planet, unlike any other animal. This ability to work together and build together has allowed us as humans to build phenomenal structures and architecture that would inspire the world. But this same instinct to fit in can cause us as humans to reject truths that are inconvenient to the cultural narrative. Example, culturally in the West, we all want to be tolerant and loving of the LGBT community because we believe it important for people to live free and not be persecuted for our nature and beliefs. But then, as men choosing to transition to women start demanding to be considered as natural women, we compete and compete in, in women's sports, we find ourselves split. Should a biological man, one with an X and Y chromosome, be able to compete in women's sports and dominate, thus taking away from biological women the right to have a sporting domain that they can win in? The whole point of women's sports in the first place was to give women a space to compete and not constantly be beat by men. As it is a biological fact that men tend to be stronger and faster than women. So supporting trans women negates the support of women's rights and vice versa. But if this groupthink or mob mentality of fitting in that we are all prone to wins out, we have to reject truths and avoid of discussing truth so that we don't run afoul of whichever principle or narrative has cultural dominance at the particular moment in which we exist. But truth is truth. We need to be open to discuss honestly. Ideas must be discussed openly. One of the things I greatly enjoyed at the university I attended was the relative freedom we had to discuss openly and honestly about various ideas in architecture, culture, history, politics. To their credit, my professors were open and honest about their beliefs and opinions. They would also provide us as students reading materials from various thinkers throughout the ages, and we would discuss what these ideas meant. Even though, at its core, architecture is simple, the building of buildings there are still overarching principles that can guide to better or worse results. The same is true in culture. If we are to succeed in not collapsing as a society into a new dark age, we must avoid the tendency towards lemming-like behavior. We must stand ultimately for truth. We must be able to listen to opinions of those we oppose and consider their points honestly. And to do this, we must not only look at the facade or ornament of a building. 
true architecture is comprised of the overall composition and how the building flows, functions, serves its purpose, not just what the style is. Too many people get caught up with modern versus traditional. There is no difference in these if the building serves its proper function and does so looking beautiful and providing the occupants with a desired sense of well-being and health. Why does it matter if a building has ionic columns as opposed to false I-beams on its face like the Seagram's building? So long as the building looks great and functions well. The same applies to all aspects of life. Don't get caught up with the facade of an argument or a narrative, but open up those guts. Look at the core functions of the argument and see if it performs its function properly. If a particular worldview or dominant cultural narrative is not delivering the truth, then maybe it needs adjustment or maybe it needs to be discarded. Truth is vital to architecture. Truth is vital to life. Believe in truth. The truth will set you free.